Hello and welcome to my Learn With Me Mini Freak series. This is episode 6, Oscillators 1.1. So first, what is a Learn With Me series? Well, a Learn With Me series is a series where you follow my end-to-end -end process in learning to get the best out of a synthesizer. In this case, it is the Arturia Mini Freak. So far, we've had a bit of an overview of the synthesizer. I've given you some of my opinions on it. We've dived to a degree into most of the sections of the synthesizer. And now I think it's time to circle back and dive into the oscillator section in a little more detail. Why? Because one of the big features of this synthesizer is its algorithmic oscillators. And so far, we've only been using one of them called basic waves. So in this episode and the following couple of episodes, I'm going to talk about the features of oscillator one, all the different types of sounds it can generate. Oscillator 2 can also generate those sounds, but it has additional capabilities of processing the sound from Oscillator 1, making this quite unique. One thing that you may note today is my video quality looks a lot worse than it normally does. This is because I found that the display, which I've already mentioned is quite small, was not really readable on my top-down camera, and I think we're going to need to be able to see it for this episode and the next few. So I've had to make some compromises and reduce the resolution. I hope it is still reasonable and still an enjoyable viewing experience. But without further ado, let's make an init patch and let's shape the sound a little bit so we have something worth working with. a bit of velocity sensitivity in sound edit envelopes velocity to VCA on the panel let's close the filter a bit use the envelope to cut off control use the velocity to envelope amount So I'm not going to talk about the basic waves oscillator because we've used it plenty. So the first oscillator to discuss is super waves. Now I'm sure many of you are familiar with the super saw, which is a saw wave combined with another saw wave an octave above, usually detuned, perhaps with an animated detune at a lower volume. This is quite evocative and um, popular, I think, on some Roland synthesizers. This extends that to allow you to not just use the saw, but the square, the triangle, or the sine. So let's try the triangle. The second, the first parameter, wave parameter, sets the wave type, which is triangle. The timbre parameter is detune. Let's open the filter. And so when set to zero, the super wave is exactly an octave above. And as detune is turned up, the amount of detune increases. And the volume control, the shape parameter, it adjusts how much of that super wave is audible. the sounds that you would expect it to have. It has a string-like quality. Let's try one of the other waveforms because the triangle is quite quiet here. So let's um, try the square. Okay, so the square is much more bright. imagine using this for some 
interesting, quite punchy leads, but also it could work with a pad, especially when used with some effects. Let's move on. Harmonic oscillator. I'm going to turn all the parameters down. So a very clean um, sign-ish sound. So the wave parameter is content, and content seems to be increasing the amount of harmonic content. Interestingly, as you get towards the top of the range, the fundamental gets weaker. Oops. So sculpting is a type of wave shape. It doesn't really sound like wave folding. It sounds a bit like um, a form of distortion almost. The final parameter is chorus. The oscillators are monophonic, so they output only one channel of audio each and the filter is also monophonic. So though this is a chorus, the chorus is not stereo. This is just a mono chorus effect. Let's try and shape a little. And let's play something. the parameters by hand. So I think animating both the wave and tomba parameters could be quite interesting here to add some complexity. When I go into actual sound design, I'm going to come back and I'm going to do some of these animations, but for now we're just exploring. Next type is car plus strong. Car plus strong is a resonance feedback. So it is a feedback loop where there is a high degree of feedback. It is usually triggered by sending in a noise pulse, which will excite that resonator and it will have a resonance and that resonance will be determined by the length of the delay. In this case, I assume that that resonance of uh, that um, delay length is chosen to give us tracking. The other thing I note is there's an ongoing tone, which if we look at the first parameter wave, Let's um, turn this in. Is bow. So note that I mentioned that the resonator is normally excited by a pulse of noise. This is meant to be like you plucking the string. Bow presumably continues to excite the resonator over time. The tomba parameter is position, which I assume, imagine a string, we normally pluck it in the center. The closer to the edge we pluck it, we get a different tone. So I'm assuming when this is maximum, it's meant to be like us plucking it right at the end, and minimum, it's like plucking it in the center. The final parameter, the shape parameter, is decay. So note with bow turned down, even though the envelope is quite long, we only get a tiny little tick. If we turn it up, it's long. So this is not um, the pitch I said is tuned by the delay time. This is the feedback amount. Let's try band pass.
a bit lower. I could imagine animating the cutoff here, that would be quite interesting. The Tombra, it's not really worth animating, I don't think, because I think that just relates to the pluck sound, and in this case I was using the bow sound. Interesting string tone in any case. Moving on, the analog. So the basic waves, the one we've been using for the majority of the series, it is intended to be a naive but conventional subtractive synthesizer sound. The analog is supposed to be virtual analog, so by that it means that it is intended to emulate the behavior of analog oscillators as opposed to just the mathematically accurate oscillator. So we have D2, which implies that there must be two or more oscillators, gape and wave. Let's just turn those down and explore. So this um, tomba parameter called shape reminds me of sync when I listen to it. Another one interesting to animate. Detune is, I mentioned the detuning between the two oscillators. And wave is the wave type, wave shape that we're using. This sounds a bit higher up. I think with all of these, one of the things that I've noted is that the analog filter makes a big difference to the character. The oscillators are, by design, very bright and very strong. I wouldn't necessarily say they sound digital, but they definitely have some of that colder character which you might expect. I definitely noticed some difference in this virtual analog waveform, but the filter really makes a huge difference to the sound here. Let's move on. Wave shaper. Let's turn this down. Let's open the filter. So near the middle, it sounds a bit triangle-ish. Moving down, there's a sort of hint of saw, but it's quite metallic. Going up, it almost sounds like it's sounding in a higher register. It's really focusing on those harmonics. Interesting. So the wave shaper, I, I can't quite hear what it is. It doesn't sound like wave folding. It sounds... It sounds a little bit like wave folding, but I don't think it is. It's almost like an additional octave is coming in. 
and replacing the fundamental. An asymmetry brings us closer to a saw wave, so I assume it's something like a wheezing in time of the waveform, a bit like a pulse width. I could definitely imagine animating this. Um, let's make it a bit more cloud like Filter. I can definitely already see a number of modulations that I'd like to do to add a bit more um, character here. Moving on to operator FM. Let's go down. Oh, this should probably be at zero. So the ratio has no impact when there's no FM amount. So presumably this is the ratio that the modulator has to the carrier. The carrier sounds at concert pitch. So I'm assuming that the ratio at 50 is the modulator is sounding at the same pitch as the carrier. 25 is one octave down, zero is two octaves down. So presumably 75 is one octave up. The amount is the FM amount. The feedback is a feedback from the carrier onto itself. Lower register. So I think again, the filter, I tried it in high pass mode, which is a little unusual for this type of sound, but it gives you a, a roundness and a smoothness to the sound, which I quite enjoy. Finally, formant. So the shape parameter, let me step back. <laughs> what is the formant? So typically when a sound changes pitch, the harmonics and the inharmonics move with the fundamental pitch at which you're playing. Formant is a component of that sound whose pitch doesn't track. It may move a little or it may stay completely fixed. They're very distinctive of um, vocal sounds, in particular vowel sounds. So when you have a resonant filter, when you're moving that filter when playing an individual note, that note you're playing is acting as the formant and the animation of the resonant filter is acting as the pitch changing, which is why you get those vowel tones. So we have an interval parameter. So 
sounds like it represents the interval between the formant and the fundamental pitch. Something different appears to happen in the upper part of the parameter scale. And then the timbre parameter controls the strength of the formant sounds. So in this case, all three of those sound like they would animate quite nicely. Let's try and filter it down. Really vowely sound, especially with the filter moving over it. Okay, so I think that is all I'm going to do in this episode. In the next episode, I'm going to come back and I'm going to go through the rest of those algorithms to avoid this being excessively long, even though it's already a fairly long episode. Um, I hope that the video quality has been acceptable and hope that this play has been <laughs> readable. In any case, I'd like to thank you very much for joining me today and say goodbye.